One of the biggest challenges that we see in the internet marketing space is the lack of attention and almost the short visibility of a particular brand or company on the internet. Um, everyone these days is just vying for these millions of eyeballs and, and there's just a real challenge in getting someone to commit to purchasing something or commit to reading something or commit to watching something. There's just such a challenge of attention span for advertisers like your company and my company because there's just so many choices out there and things are moving so fast. And so one of the things that you have to learn to do in this world of internet marketing is basically try to find a way to easily further the relationship. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this week's Three and Five with Patrick Almond. Hey there, welcome to Three and Five with Patrick Almond, where I usually cover, you know, three marketing tips in five minutes. However, if you're a longtime listener, and I would encourage you to subscribe, um, what I'm wanting to start doing is changing up the format of the podcast and of the video for you, those of you that are, are watching or listening a little bit. Usually we explore three topics, three rapid fire topics in five minutes. But what I've learned is that we've gone through a lot of topics and I'm getting some requests and I would personally like to see us explore a couple of topics a little bit deeper. So while I still may call the show three and five, what you may see is more of like a one in five or a one in 10 format where I cover a, a topic in more detail. And I like your feedback on this, either on social media or via email, or just leave a comment someplace to let me know. But I thought I would start taking certain topics and exploring them deeper uh, and turning this into a longer format show. So, so yeah, there you go. And today's topic is going to be talking about furthering the relationship. Now, first of all, let's define that. What I'm talking about is combating the usual challenge that you have as a business owner of someone coming to some place where you've put your heart and soul into marketing and they barely glance at it and then they're gone and you never see them again. That is a huge challenge on the internet. It's a challenge for your business. It's a challenge for my business. It's for, for the amount of time that we spend in marketing and sales and, and making things look pretty and making videos like this, people have a very short attention span and you're constantly having to combat that. So I thought today in this video, I would give you some ideas as to how to maybe take that relationship a little bit further earlier on. You see, in my belief, there's kind of two ends to the sales or marketing spectrum for all of those of you that are in the world of sales and marketing. You've got the, the people who come in and they have a very short attention span and they're not interested in buying uh, right now, but they may in the future. And then you have at the other end of the spectrum, you have people that are ready to buy and you have, you have no challenge at all getting them to pull out their credit card or their paycheck. And then you kind of have everyone in between. And that everyone in between is, is the challenge for you. You're trying to move everyone from the, hey, I found you side more over to the, hey, I want to buy something from you side. And I call that entire thing furthering the relationship. It's also known as a marketing funnel where you know you have all the casual shoppers at the top and you have the purchasers way down at the bottom and you're constantly nurturing everyone in between. And, and the entire point or, or most of the point of internet marketing, uh, yeah, there is some kind of brand awareness going on, but even in the world of brand awareness, you want to get someone to further the relationship. And that's one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons we use social media. I'm not a big believer that social media was meant to be social. I've heard people say that before and I don't believe that. Social media was not meant for any particular thing, but what we've done as businesses is if we've, we've turned it into a marketing and sales vehicle to help further the relationship, if you will. And so I have a list of things here underneath the camera that you may consider when um, you want to work on that, when you want to further the relationship. And, and before we even get into that, I want to make sure that you understand the concept, and I may cover this in a different, in a different session, about making sure that what you have to offer in the first place is very valuable. Um, you'll watch some other videos and you'll see me talk about the importance of standing out, of not being another Me Too business or something like that. And I just really want to emphasize that before we go too far, is before you work on some of the tactics here I'm going to talk about, make sure that you are offering something that is so dang good, people cannot pass it up. Or even if they're not interested in buying it right now, they want to hang on to your information or follow you or, or like you or subscribe to you or whatever uh, to 
make sure that when they are ready, and it may, it may be a day from now, it may be a week from now, it may be 10 years from now, but you wanna make sure that when they're ready for that, what you're offering is so good that they are going to want to remember you, even if they don't need your services. And that's kind of an indicator of when you have something so good is when someone that doesn't even need what you're offering uh, you know, wants to stay in touch with you, get on your email list or whatever. And so here's some, some things right here on, um, on, on this list that I wanted to cover with you that, and uh, again, I, I, I learned all these from experience. This is, we, we run a digital marketing agency at allaboutfocus.com, and these are just some of the tactics that we get involved, that we talk about, that we execute for people, because everybody has retention issues. Um, the first one is going to be email marketing. And I hear a lot of people say that email marketing is dead, and I can tell you there's nothing further from the truth. I know every single company out there, big or small, has an email list, and they're constantly trying to grow it. Your email list may only be five people, it may be 50 people, or it may be five million people. And yes, there are people that have five million, um, e five million email address email lists. I mean, they just vary in a huge number of sizes. But as much as people think that email is dead, I'm still a huge fan of it because it's one of the very few ways you can grab someone's attention uh, and keep it for a little while. And people have to have email for personal reasons, for business reasons, for family reasons. So email is not going away anytime soon. And I don't know about you, to tell you the truth, I actually prefer email, even my bills, over to regular mail. So email is a staple in our lives. And if you can gather someone's email address, and that's something we do here at Focus, if you can gather someone's email address and find a way to stay in touch with them, that is a huge bonus. And you may you might even be watching this video as a result of, um, of, uh, of, of being on my email list, if you will. So find a way to give someone something extremely valuable in exchange for their email list. And if you wanna take that to another level, find a way to um, filter out what the person's needs and wants are. There's, there's two different schools of email marketing. One is just to get every single one on a list and just blast them with everything. And, and that's a good start, but the better way is to g gather their information and also what their interests are, what their needs, or their wants, or their pain points are. If, if you're someone who has a clothing store, it, it would be helpful to know whether or not you're, the person on your email list is male or female. Are they tall or are they short? Or are they, are they heavy set or are they kind of a more waif skinny set? You want to gather some kind of information so your marketing message can be a little bit more targeted because every single piece of marketing you do should be targeted. So try to gather some a little bit more information and get them on the email list. And in the world of the internet marketing, to me, outside of a purchase, that's one of the most valuable things you can have is an email list. Okay, so after email lists, um, because cell phones are so prevalent, you might consider um, getting people to subscribe to a texting list. And what that means is people can just text in to, um, to a particular code and they get on your texting list and you can then move them over to your email list or you can just keep them on a texting list. Some people are perfectly happy uh, checking their text messages all the time and that's where you can send out your blog posts or your company specials or your coupons or your events. And there are some, there are great services out there to do this. Uh, I recently used callloop.com as a service and I have no affiliation with them, but I can tell you it's a great service. You just come up with a code. Uh, you know, let's say my, my, my code was Patrick. I could say text code Patrick to 86753 and they would instantly get or on my list or they would subscribe to my list. I then can send them specials and keep them up to date about what's going on. So to me, um, email and texting are two of the more powerful ways to stay in touch with somebody uh, because you have a direct one-on-one -on -one contact with them and you can reach out to them and grab their attention when there's nothing else. You know, usually when someone has an email opened up, it's the only email on the screen. And usually when someone's reading a text message, that's only the text message on the screen. But outside of that, we kind of get into the usual conventions nowadays of social engagement and social connection. You want to be sure that if, you know, if someone's not going to maybe get on your email list or subscribe to you via text message, you want to push them to a social channel. And I, I don't, you know, it's kind of obvious nowadays because that's just the world we live in, but I want to emphasize that, that you want to have a call to action. You want to push someone to like you on Facebook, follow you on Facebook, follow you on Twitter, subscribe to you on YouTube. YouTube is very important, it's huge. But, but whatever social channel you pick to be on, 
push people to that because that's a way of furthering the relationship. And that's almost getting in the way, if you will, to, to micro commit to your way to your brand. So whether it's it's Instagram or, or Pinterest or whatever it is, constantly be pushing people to that because people spend a lot of time on those social sites. And again, if you push them to socially engage with you, to like, comment, share, do all that stuff, you have a better chance of staying front of mind with them. And if you go over the paid advertising world, which we highly encourage and we teach, then you have a better chance of reaching them. I, you know, it's very hard for me to advertise to someone who um, is, is not a fan. If, if I try to put an advertisement in front of someone who's not a fan, they, first of all, they might or might not see it. That's the way social advertising works. And if they see it, they might or might not be interested in it. However, if somebody is a fan, I already know they're interested in it, so I have a better chance of getting um, a return on my marketing dollar. So again, you wanna push someone to whatever the social channel is, and by the way, pick a social channel, pick one or two, and commit to them. Do not be on five social channels. Um, commit to one and push people there. And then outside of that, another tactic that we are huge fans of is retargeting. And the two major platforms for retargeting right now are Facebook and Google. And that um, in, in non-techie terms, that's just putting a little bit of code on your website and then being able to advertise to them later based on what they're browsing on your website. You can do it based on them going to your homepage or you can do it based on them going a little bit deeper into your website. And again, I've covered retargeting in past podcasts and past videos, probably several of them. So if you have a chance, you know, you might get that retargeting code on your website because um, uh, because it's, it's really important and because you can gather more information about them. And again, you can learn more about your shopper, your shoppers, your consumers, and you can, put, you can put the right message in front of them at the right time. And that actually brings something else to mind is um, a lot of people are afraid of advertising and afraid of marketing. And being a business owner or being in the marketing department of your company is your job and it's your duty to market and it's your duty to have a valuable product and get that in front of the right person. So you need to use targeted marketing to get the right product in front of the right person at the right time. And there's nothing to be ashamed about and there's nothing to be afraid about. And you know, obviously you don't wanna do sell, sell, sell. That's never good, but don't ever be afraid of or ashamed of saying, you know, hey, we have a good service. We have a good product and you could use this to benefit your life or you would look great in this or you could use this to improve your car or this would look great in your house. Don't ever be afraid of marketing and sales. So again, remember, your job as the marketing person is in the business and actually your job in the C-level also is to further the relationship. So always look for ways that you can further the relationship because most of the people that are going to be coming to you are not going to be in a buying mode. They are in a shopping mode. They are in, uh, I'm on my computer uh, casually t browsing and I have 20 tabs mode. They're in a, oh, I'm in between bus stops and I'm on my cell phone mode for about 15 seconds. Find a way to further that relationship. And I talked about email lists, I talked about text messages, I talked about pushing the social connections, I talked about retargeting. So if you have any questions about that, of course you can connect with me on social media and I'll gladly answer all those questions. Uh, subscribe to me on YouTube because I'm a big fan of there. Also look for the three and five podcast in iTunes and uh, do me a favor, and this is really important, and go over to ownyourempire.com and get on my email list. Yes, it's self-serving, but that's an area where I'm gonna be really growing the business. It's gonna be training and education and a members area and all kinds of cool things. So again, the website is ownyourempire.com and I have an email sign up form there and you can always unsubscribe 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's why I'm never afraid about getting on an email list because the smart person will let me get off. And again, I always love your business questions. So if you've got a business question, connect with me on social media, send me a business question. Uh, you know, text me if you can track down my, uh, the what's, what's the best number to text me at? 405-251-2022 I think is the best one. But it's probably better just to connect with me on social media and uh, or give us a call at 405-548-5185. Send me your business questions. I will gladly answer them. And you are not the only one that has your business questions. So keep connected with me on social media. Subscribe on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to getting next week's session out to you in this three and five with Patrick Almond.